Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about Stephen King's 2004 novel, The Dark Tower 6, Song of Susanna. We'll show you the points to look for when trying to identify First US and First UK trade hardcover editions, as well as provide some thoughts on the work itself. The first U.S. trade hardcover edition was published by Grant with a major league assist from Scribner when it com came to actually printing and distributing um, the hundreds of thousands of copies in this first edition. Despite the fact that this is an incredibly common book, it is still a very attractive book, and so we'll take a look at that as well. But there's the back cover image of Stephen King as a young man, and at the age he was when he finished his magnum opus, The Dark Tower series. Inside the front jacket, look for a price of US uh, $30. Let's see, Canada $43.50. Those poor Canadians always have to pay more for books, but $30, if there's no price inside the jacket, even if the book has all of the other points, um, it was most likely released as some kind of a book club edition. I have seen copies of these books that have all of the first edition book points to look for with an unpriced jacket. These books are very common. So if, you, if your book matches the first edition points, the jacket is unpriced, I would just look around um, for a copy with a really nice priced jacket, swap it out, sort of Frankenstein it together, and then there you go. You've got your proper first trade edition. Attractive illustrated end papers there. On the copyright page, look for a number line that includes the number one and the language first trade edition. Let's see, the illustrations in this one are by Daryl Anderson and is illustrated throughout like all of the Dark Tower novels are. There's an example, some Tipton artwork. There's another. So underneath the jacket, very nice cloth cover all around gold printing on the spine. So this is kind of an interesting hybrid um, release to ramp up to the scope and the scale of what was needed. Scribner did a lot of the heavy lifting, but it was still released as a, so it was a common trade hardcover edition produced in hundreds of thousands of copies. It was still a grant production and I mean, really, they kind of pulled out all the stops. It has all the bells and whistles in terms of um, finishes and is an attractive book, as are books five and seven as well. But yeah, I think that's all there is to say about that one. There is the first U.S. trade hardcover edition of Song of Susanna. And here is the British trade edition of Song of Susanna. Um, this book features, uh, in my opinion, superior artwork on the cover, um, and uh, the back of the jacket has the same double photo, uh, photograph of King as volume five. The price on the jacket is £20 UK, and the binding here is a blue cloth with silver foil stamping on the spine and a Roman numeral six stamped onto the front, meaning a six volume. Again, the inside of the book is ported over directly from the Donald Grant version. Um, and uh, this, um, this one will state first edition on the copyright page. Uh, with no indication of printing otherwise, other than that. Uh, I think I forgot to show you that in, in uh, Volume 5, so give me a sec. And then the, it, the interior uh, tip sheets are the same. So overall, it's basically the same book as the um, U.S. Limited uh, in a different package. So there's the U.K. Song of Susanna. And just because I know I skipped it, um, let's take a look again at Wolves of the Cala. Uh, and it's the same story if you're looking for a first printing. It says first edition there, 
um, with no other indication of printing underneath. So those volumes do match. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. So of course, Song of Susanna um, was released right around the same time as book five, Wolves of the Cala, and book seven, The Dark Tower. So after Stephen King had taken 15 years to release books one through four in 1999, nearly loses his life in a very, very scary and serious car accident. And when he got healthy again, he set about the work of finishing his magnum opus, which was very, very exciting for me. I remember when that was announced. I remember all the promotion and publicity around it. Um, I do remember being a little concerned because previously Stephen King had talked about um, waiting for the winds of Roland's world to start blowing or, you know, for the door to open and waiting for inspiration to strike before diving back in to Roland's world. And, you know, the idea of him sitting down and writing thousands, <laughs> thousands of manuscript pages, um, just sitting down and saying, no, uh, I'm going to open that door. I'm going to find that door. I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to finish these three books back to back was a little concerning because um, it was such a monumental feat. And as the series wears on, um, so I, I read the first several books in the series, which is this like enjoyment of the idea of the quest. It's really about the journey, not about the destination. And then as the series continues to progress, I realize holy crap, Stephen King actually has to create a thing called the Dark Tower, and how can that possibly live up to this amazing world and this journey and all of these characters and all of these adventures and experiences. Um, but anyway, the experience of reading books five, six, and seven back to back was a little bit overwhelming and exhausting, and I feel like it was probably a little bit overwhelming and exhausting for Stephen King to write them but book six um book six song of Susanna, doesn't in my memory and it's been almost 20 years since i've read it so i'm a little hazy on the details but um in my memory it doesn't have as strong of an individual identity as all the other books in the series um it almost to me exists because it had to so that book five wasn't, you know, 35,000 pages long or book seven wasn't 55,000 pages long. So in the middle, there's this chunk and it does, as I recall, kind of have its own feel, but doesn't, it just kind of comes in between these two other bigger, arguably more important books. Um, it's not to say that it's bad, it just, it got me, you know, it's just, it's a lot of business. It's a lot of busy work to get the characters disparate threads. They're not all together, which I think is another reason why maybe it's not as engaging. It's like watching, um, watching an episode of a TV show where the whole, the forward progression of the show is maybe like 10 minutes, but there's so many different storylines happening that it's over here for a little bit and it's over there for a little bit. And then when it's all said and done, it's like, but they they barely moved. Um, anyway, that sounds really negative and critical. I don't mean it to. Song of Susanna is still a really good book. It's an important part of the Dark Tower series. It just kind of suffers with that middle child syndrome because I always think of books five, six, and seven together um, almost as siblings. It is, um, I do remember it being very controversial. So again, spoiler alert, but there's elements of Song of Susanna that are very meta. It gets into the realm of meta fiction. And I remember some people being very bothered by that. Like how, how cheap, how campy, I can't believe that he's going there. I can't believe that he's doing this. If you're like me, it's one of my very, very favorite aspects of the entire Dark Tower series is sort of the meta fiction aspects and my mind was thoroughly blown and I just remember thinking it was very exciting and very unique and very cool and I enjoyed it very much. So in that in that regard, even though Song of Susanna um, 
is definitely not, I think, one of the standout novels in the Dark Tower series. It does have some really important, unique, and cool aspects. And, you know, it wouldn't be the Dark Tower series without it, so who am I to complain? But I did, you know, specifically call this the first trade edition. Um, it was not the first worldwide edition, but it was the first commonly available edition that most people saw in bookstores, purchased, added to their collections. This, I paid full price for this, um, so 35 bucks um, back in 2004, which was a lot of money for me back in 2004. This was my original copy. I've had it ever since. Um, you know, the book has depreciated. It's probably about a $10 book now. Um, even in this shape, which is, you know, it's been read, but it's been well taken care of. It's about a $10 book, but um, I think it's a great value because like I mentioned before, um, full color illustrations, cloth binding all around. Um, it's just, it's an attractive book as are books five and seven. So anyway, there's the first US trade hardcover thanks as always to noah for showing the uk first which i do not have in my own collection thanks above all to you the viewers for your um for your support and your interest in the channel i really really appreciate it and wherever you are i hope you have a great rest of your day i will talk to you later bye